Good morning, YouTube. Uh, Sunday, November 19th. And uh, my wife just left to go to work. We're getting ready to move. We're going to move over closer to my job. I just wanted to tell y'all thank you again. I hope y'all watched my wife's raw video yesterday. Um, you guys, she needs your support. She's struggling, man. It's hard. Beating addiction when it's part of your identity is even harder. I, uh, I did drugs. I didn't have an alcohol problem. I have family members, my mother, that have addictive personality, drug, alcohol still going on in their life. But from the age of nine, I started smoking weed <laughs> and became addicted to that. And then by the time I was 15, it was Coke, started doing Coke, loved that. Oh man, had a lot. I, I got stories to tell y'all for, for days. Uh, by the time I turned now, keep in mind, I've been smoking weed now and doing coke from the age of nine and 15. Had a kid, 15 years old, had a little boy. <laughs> Dropped out of school, thought I was going to be a drug dealer, right? Hey, guess what? It doesn't work out. Just just trying to save y'all a lot of time in life. It doesn't work out. <clears throat> so by the time I, uh, well, let's keep in mind, 15 all the way to 18, Cocaine, selling it, became part of a, oh, I can just afford to get high thing, you know? I can afford to get high. Now I got a kid here on the in the world, living off my baby mama. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Um, by the time I turned 18, didn't have nothing to do with my kid. I had a, had a daughter too. Didn't care. Didn't care about none of that. I was on drugs, man. I was living the dope boy life. I was hanging out, had money, friends everywhere. Fucking didn't even think about your children. Don't think about nothing because the drugs got a hold of me, the, the addiction part of it all. So by the time I turned 18, you know, funny thing is, I, uh, I was doing okay in my book. Fuck, I thought I was doing really good. Well, started trying meth. You guys, please, I'm begging y'all, don't never, ever, ever, ever get into that stuff, man. Took over my whole identity, took over my life, my world. At first, uh, I was just doing it, you know, at first, I was just doing it. Actually, I got pretty junked out on it, couldn't even really afford it. Started scrapping, doing all the stuff all these tweakers do that you hear funny stories about that you think it's funny. And you, and you laugh about it. But the truth is, it's not funny at all. It's sick. It's disgusting. And when you're in it, you think it's normal. You think it's part of life. <laughs> hey, it's awesome. So, I learned how to run heavy equipment when I was 20 years old. My, uh, my son's and daughter's grandfather, he was a superintendent for a major construction company. So, I moved out to Texas. Uh, I got sobered up for a couple weeks, thought it was time to change my life, thought I was ready to be a dad. He gave me an opportunity to move out there, learn the construction industry, and be a dad to my children, finally. So I did. I moved out there, sobered up. Only reason I really sobered up is because I didn't have no way to get it out there. Couldn't send it in the mail. I was too scared. So, sobered up for a couple weeks. Made it out there. <clears throat> uh, long story short, got really good at running equipment. Got really good at it in a short amount of time. Uh, found some people out there. Guess what? Started doing it again. Keeping it a secret. Didn't want my kids to find out I was living there doing it. Didn't want no one to know. That addiction still had a hold of my brain. It was still embedded in my brain. Let's let's shorten this down a little bit because it's a long, long story. I'll share more and more as we get on with this channel and we and we improve on our, on everything. But long story short, I was still stuck on the meth. It was my favorite. It helped me not be hungry. It helped me stay up. 
it, I, okay, I'm sorry. I thought that it was helping me. That's the moral of this. I thought it was a complete help. Like, hey man, 50 bucks a week, not a big deal. No one knows I'm doing it. It's a big secret. Helps me lose a little bit of weight. Helps me be better at life, right? Right? No, no, it doesn't. Fast forward to about 22 years old, living like a junkie, have a job, part of my kid's life, so I'm doing good, right? Yeah, yeah I'm being a dad now. Broke, living paycheck to paycheck, can't really afford my bills, living in a rat house. Uh, but once again, this addiction had me believing that I was doing good. I'm doing all right. As long as I can afford me a bag a week, I'll be fine. I've got my house here. I'm a dad to my kids. Everything's going good. No car, no license. <laughs> Still a bum. Fast forward now. A lot of stuff goes on. End up moving away from my kids. Forget all about them all over again. Guess what? Whatever. Doesn't matter. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an addict. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm good. Meet up with somebody and learn how to sell it. You guys, I had more money and, and everything. I was my own boss, didn't have a schedule, $50,000 in a safe, nice car, PlayStation, whatever year it was, brand new PlayStations and friends everywhere. I was trying to start a business all off meth money, made, made a lot of money, was comfortable, loved it, had a blast, did anything I wanted whenever I wanted, didn't care. I lasted about a year. I got away with it for about a year. Uh, I don't know if y'all know anything about meth, but armed trafficking is a PBL. Armed trafficking. Uh, I ended up with three years. I didn't get caught armed trafficking or anything crazy. I actually ended up going to prison for somebody else's stuff that I trusted. I trusted that guy. <laughs> Imagine that. Trusted him, ended up in prison. Three years. That's all I did was three years, you guys. Now, I've always been a believer in God. And if and if you're not, this channel is probably not going to be for you. Because even when I was selling drugs, and this might be wrong and it might be right. Who knows how you feel about it? But I know I used to pray to God to let me get home with my bag of dope at night. My big bag that I was going to sell. I used to pray to God. I always believed in God. It's something I very firmly believe in as a creator. We have a creator. I believe in that. And I, and I always will. Was me asking him for the favors that I was asking him for in that life? Right? Probably not. Will I answer to that someday? I don't know. I'd like to think that me going to prison and doing my time will be my answer and that I can apologize and, and, and get into heaven or however that works. But I'm not sure. So, I just want y'all to know that I got high in prison, <laughs> believe that or not. Prison is just like the street. It's the same thing. It's just there's no women. Same thing, you get to go pretty much be a free life, but in prison you eat, the food is no good, whatever, whatever. I got prison stories. Like I said, I got a lot of stories for y'all that probably, if y'all are interested in it, let us know and I'll let you know every little detail of all of it because it sucked. So I got high through prison, made it to work release. Sobered up for work release because I didn't want to get drug tested. I didn't have nobody to fall on, y'all. My granddad passed away. I missed his funeral. That was caused by meth addiction. The one that raised me had to miss his funeral because of meth. Because I was high, ended up in jail, couldn't get out, couldn't go to the funeral. And the funeral was five minutes down the road from the jail. It's pretty sad, right? So, uh, got made it to work release. Sobered up for work release. Um... First time I had been sober in five years. It was easy to kick it, you know? It was funny. It's so funny. So easy to just quit. I quit because I had to. I didn't want to get in trouble. I wanted to get out and have a life. But my plan was, was to get out and sell a lot more meth. That was my plan in prison. Isn't that sad? That's what my mind was so conditioned to think about meth. It's the addiction. It's embedded in your brain. Thinking about the money. How good it makes you feel. Thinking about all that stuff, man. I say that now laughing. But like I said, you guys, this is very serious. 
And when you're caught in the moment of all of it, and your brain is in addiction mode, you're not the same person. I made it to work release. I got a job at a, at a uh, landscaping company, exclusive. They were called exclusive landscaping. And uh, when I was sober, I have a very hard work ethic, believe it or not. The lady Karina, she fell in love with me, man. I mean, not on a sexual level. I mean, as far as her employee, I was one of the best employees she had. I uh, I I mopped the floors there, man. Like I mopped the, I cleaned the whole place. Like I was just the man there. I did everything there. I was the one changing all the oil and all the. I became the maintenance guy, the the install guy, the this guy, the that guy. To the point where the lady, she was gonna give me a truck and a place to live when I got out of prison. Her and her husband. And uh, I was proud of that. I was proud to be sober and accomplish that. It was probably one of the most proudest things in the moment of my life at that time. Well, guess what happened? Now, this isn't an excuse. I'm not blaming this on anyone. This is all my fault. Everything I've ever been through is my fault. I want y'all to know that. But my boss that I was working for when I was working there at Karina's, he was a cokehead. Well, one day, guess what he did? He brought some Molly to work. Well, guess what? They don't have a drug test for Molly. <laughs> guess what Zach did? Zach, uh, Zach did some Molly. And guess what that did? That reopened my addiction part of my brain. So let's, let's shorten the story down. I went from having a truck and a place to live when I got out to being fired. Okay. Not only did I get fired, I got caught smoking Molly at the work release center. And I got sent back to prison for my last 60 days. 60 days in the box, solitary confinement, last 60 days of my three-year sentence. This is where the magic happened for me, you guys. This is where my life changed. It took to be at the lowest. I mean, you can't get lower than in prison, in jail, at the jail of the prison. You, you can't get lower than that, you guys. This is the lowest point of my entire being from the day I was born until that moment. Now, like I said, keep in mind, I've always believed in God. I've always prayed to God. I've always, I've always believed in God. <laughs> and I remember being by myself in that cell. <laughs> and yet in prison, they have these mirrors. I don't know if anyone in here has ever been into jail or anything like that. You'll, you know what I'm talking about. These mirrors are like metal. So you could see your reflection in them, but they're not a real mirror. But I remember standing in front of that mirror. There was no one in the room. It was just me. Two man cell solitary no one in there just me all by myself and i remember looking in the mirror this was after i woke up from the night before woke up in in here woke up and realized what happened and i started talking to myself out loud but i was talking to god at the same time if anyone would have seen this happening at the moment, they would have thought I needed to go to a psych ward because I was literally pointing at myself, talking to myself uh, very, very aggressively. And I asked myself, I said, Zach, look at you. you let's try to keep this YouTube friendly. Look at you, you piece of shit. There's a lot worse that I was saying. You effing piece of S. Uh, where are you at right now? And I'm answering myself out loud, too, by the way. I'm in, I'm in prison and jail. Well, what is the main reason that brings you here to this low that you're at? A low that you've managed to succeed to beat the last low of where you're at. What is it? What is the common denominator in this life that you're living that brings you here? What is it? And I said to myself out loud, drugs. And I pointed at myself when I said drugs. It's drugs. And at that moment in my life, I was done. I'm done with this shit. This is not the way I want to live my life. This is not the way that I want to live. I don't want to live with somebody telling me what I'm going to do, when I'm going to do it. Taking my clothes off to go into the facilities, squatting and coughing, all this crap that I had to put up with, all the gang stabbings and all the crazy stuff, you guys. There's stories that I could tell you that'll make you freaking sick to your stomach, man. I've seen some stuff and it sucked. So anyone who's on here trying to brag about prison, oh, big man, went to prison, tough guy. Yeah, 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 no, dude, it sucks. I recommend anyone who ever thought about getting in any trouble to change their life right now 
before you go to that direction. So there's a little backstory on me, you guys. I'm sorry if that was too long or too deep. Or When I got out of prison, I started lifting weights. I don't know. I'm, I'm still not in the shape I want to be in. But maybe someday my wife and I will do some up with some physiques. I'm pretty strong. I lost a lot of weight. I got my mind mental in shape. I've been working out for about five years solid now every single day. I take like one rest day, two rest days a week. Uh, I'm very big into health nutrition. I became a nerd. When I got out of prison, uh, I started YouTube and no one, I didn't have a coach. I didn't have no one to teach me any of this stuff. I just started YouTube and man, it's very possible to learn anything you want on YouTube. Dug into nutrition, dug into fitness, started lifting weights. Uh, now I'm addicted to that. I've been sober, completely sober, not a drop. I mean, I've had, I've drank alcohol maybe, let's be real here, guys, four times in five years. I completely changed my addiction, which this is necessary for some people, and this is something a lot of y'all need to hear. Trade your addiction that you're under now. If anyone in here is facing addiction, whether it be alcohol, no matter what it is, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's changing your life in a negative way, get rid of it. And I know it's easy for me to say that, right? It's so easy to say that. No, no, no. I lived this. I did this. I was the biggest drug addict, most piece of shit person you would ever meet on the face of this earth. I stole from my granddad. <laughs> money out of his wallet. From my mama. From everyone. My dad. Broke into their houses. I've done some very, very, very messed up things on drugs. Now, I started living life to do to others what I want done to me. I'm honest with people. Even to the point where it might make them not like me so much. Honesty can hurt people when they're not in the right mind frame. Being completely honest. Yeah, sometimes I'm too blunt. I'm very hard on my wife. I'm trying to learn to be a lot better husband for her, especially now that she's taking this journey serious. Uh, I'm an asshole, man. I believe that my way works. Some of us get caught up in that, believing that since we've been there, done that, our way is the best way. It's not always true. I've built a life for myself outside of prison. <clears throat> I have a brand new car, great credit. Uh, this house that we're in, this this RV that my wife and I moved into, had it delivered out to Texas. It's very nice in here. Uh, a 2023 vehicle. All this stuff, I don't have no co-signers, you guys. I don't have, I didn't have nobody. I did this all on my own with my wife. She inspired me, you know. She did. In the beginning, when we first met each other, she was very much an alcoholic, alcoholic. She was very much drinking four days a week. Uh, she kind of changed that pretty fast when she realized, you know, when we met, there's a connection that me and my wife have that I'll never be able to compare it to another human being on this earth. Uh, she was drinking probably Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Matter of fact, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, she was drinking at least a 12-pack every single one of those days. And she knew it was wrong because she's the one that decided, hey, look, if you, you know, she started by saying things like, hey, if I'm up too late, you know, because I'd be in there in bed. I was, I actually ended up staying at her mom's house with her for about a week before we ended up getting our own place out there in Florida. And she used to stay up late. <clears throat> be out there drinking and at first you know she came to me and was like look if this is a problem like I need I know that I need to stop and she was very humble and she knew that she had an issue and I told her you know hey look that's just not the life that I live uh, I beat addiction you know I understand drinking beer you know it's legal it's cool whatever but you're drinking a lot so she slowed it down almost immediately to one day a week she got very serious about this getting in health, uh, her health. She seen me, you know, she was trying to lead. I was, I was trying to lead by example, but not, not, not for her sake. This was all for my sake. I do this for me. I do this for me and myself, uh, my journey that I'm on. I do this working out every day and healthy. I do this for myself. But when she came into the equation, she started seeing what I was all about. She started seeing how serious I was it's about my health, uh, about the gym. She started going to the gym with me. She lost 20 pounds in, uh, in about, I'd say, 
a month and a half. She was only drinking one day a week. I was super proud of her. But the fact that knowing what that addiction is, the fact that it used to drive me crazy, you guys. It used to drive me crazy. It hurts. I don't know if y'all know anything about passion, but I'm a passionate, loving person. And I used to see her do so good. And then that one day a week, it would screw her up. Of course, she didn't go to the gym the next day. Sometimes I could talk her into getting up the second day after drinking to get to the gym. Third day, she was up. She was back motivated, healthy. Uh, the day after that drinking night, I mean, the eating is ice cream and, and all junk food because that's what your mind is craving the next two days in a row. I used to see this from the outside looking in and, and I used to hate it. Because when you love someone the way that I love this woman, and I still love her more and more and more every single day, but to watch her slowly destroy herself, even though she's doing a lot better, I was very proud of her for slowing her drinking down. Very, very proud of her. But when you see the potential in somebody to be so, so perfect and so great, you see all the little details of the wrong things going on. You guys, that one day a week backpedaled her to the point where she stopped going to the gym. She gained all that weight back. She blamed it on me. She said it was because I sang too loud when I went to the gym. She had her she had her built-in excuses of why. And the truth is, you guys, is because it's hard, man. It's hard to live. You gotta you gotta make this a lifestyle. You can't just look at it as a lose some weight thing. This is a lifestyle. You have to make this the new normal. Just like the alcohol or the drugs is the normal, you make this the normal. This is how you do this, you guys. You make this the normal. Me getting up at 3 a.m. and heading to the gym is normal. This is my normal life. This is just what I do. People that I tell this to, they're like, yeah, right, he's crazy. Yeah, he's crazy. Everyone at my job, I'm, I'm one of the only people I know that do this, that have been doing it consistent. But I feel like I'm winning, you guys. I'm not rich. <laughs> no, I'm not. I have a lot of stuff and I have a lot of debt. But you know what? I'm happy, man. I'm happy when I look in the mirror. I'm happy when I get to get in my brand new car that nobody helped me pay for and I get to go. I'm happy when I get to come home and sit down in this beautiful place. I'm happy. I've got a theater in the living room. I'm happy here. I'm happy, you guys. Do I want more? Hell yeah. Are, is, my, is now that my wife is on this journey with me, are we going to get what we dream of? Hell yeah, we are. We're, this is just the beginning, you guys. I want y'all to follow us through this entire journey, all of it, from being down here in debt, trying to get sober, completely sober, my wife's journey, trying to get her through this. And I want you to see where we're at next year. I want you to see the possibilities of what you can do if you just change your mindset. I want you to see this, because this is important. And right now, my wife, she's struggling for her life, man. She has an addiction problem. If you guys didn't watch that video yesterday, please go watch it. It's so real. She didn't. She was embarrassed for me to watch it. It's beautiful, you guys. She needs to release these informations to you. Because this could help the next person who just can't give it up. You know? Like, seriously, you guys. Share that. Support that. The raw, unfiltered truth of going through an addiction problem and overcoming it. This is the beginning. I was the same exact place she is right now today. I was there, you guys. I was there. She makes it look easy, and that's a good thing. But when she posts videos like she did yesterday, you see the truth. You see the struggle. You see it's real. You see what's on her brain. On a Saturday, that's the hardest part for her. Her first day off of the weekend, I'm at work. She can do whatever she wants. She could have went and got beer. She's got money. She's not broke. But she didn't because she wants to change her life. That's why we need you guys to share this and support this. Please, you guys share support help her i love you guys i thank you guys so very much for all of your support even no matter how little of people that are subscribed i don't care share it like it support my wife get her through this 75 hard we are on day five i got my shit together now this is the fifth day uh my wife is doing it to the t man we're actually pushing she put she did a third workout yesterday to give her a real talk to y'all i'm super super proud of my wife and when she sees this, I hope she knows that I love her more than I love life. And I want her to win. 
and we're going to win together. So you guys, have a great day. Have a blessed Sunday. Go out there and go for a walk, y'all. Get up off the couch. Go do something with yourself. I love y'all. Have a blessed day.